Well, time to get going and continue our New Game Plus run in Shadow Hearts. This time we will be finishing Act 1. I can't say exactly how much further than Act 1 we'll be getting, uh, because admittedly, uh, I am starting a bit later than I intended and hoped I would be able to, because what I hoped for was to start earlier entirely because of a Pokemon Scarlet having its midnight release. Uh, which I'm going to be going to, to the local mall. They're uh, releasing it at 10 p.m. But yeah. Did also get a little distracted before opening up, uh, before running the stream. So starting even later than later. Because... Uh, I use the nightly builds for PCSX2, so basically every time I open up PCSX2, uh, I get prompted to download an update. And this most recent update mentioned fixes for Shadowheart Covenant. Well, for Shadowheart's Covenant, and so I, I had, I had to check them. And, hey, holy shit, they actually did fix the whole blank frame issue well blank screen issue uh and i checked it with additional fixes in place for the sake of uh, like fmv flicker and yeah it all works perfectly fine now so it looks like i'm gonna be getting to shadow hearts covenant sooner than i thought i would because yeah it runs perfect it runs perfectly fine on emulation now All right, I should buy some talismans of uh, luck and mercy. Uh, yeah, specifically mercy. I'm still gonna be doing uh, Trails in the Sky uh, next for the next JRPG I'm gonna play. But yeah, I'm gonna at least get to Shadow Hearts Covenant not too much long after that. I do hope that the fixes uh, also do apply to From the New World. It would take longer for me to check that, because I believe the first battle in From the New World does take a bit to get to. It should, but the way it's phrased sounds like it might just be a game-specific thing. And of course, like, I'd say this as if, like, the internet isn't exploding currently. Like, oh yeah, that's the notable news. Like, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are releasing tonight, and Shadow Hearts Covenant got a, it works better on emulation. That's obviously the big news for today, and that's all there is. As if Twitter isn't dying as we speak. As if Yuji Naka wasn't just arrested for insider trading regarding Dragon Quest, which is the most wild statement I have heard in forever, ever. Just holy shit. What? Write this song. But yeah, uh, like I said, Twitter's exploding currently, so I'm gonna figure out. I'm gonna have to update my Twitch profile to include my Twitch profile and my YouTube page to uh, include my co-host information. <laughs>
the song isn't bad, by the way, when I had that reaction of like, oh god, this song. It's not like it's bad as much as the game constantly uh, starting the song over as soon as you exit battle is what makes it kind of obnoxious to listen to because it's the start of the song repeated over and over and the song takes a while to get going. Yeah, all things considered though, with what I was saying about the Pokemon Scarlet Midnight release, yeah, I'm probably gonna be only uh, playing till like for like two hours, right? I'm gonna need three of I don't need three. I forget how many it gives me, but I'll buy two. So I'm gonna need them for the upcoming Wooly fight. This, this, this theme is good, it's just that it it takes so long to get to the real, like, good part of it. And you just keep hearing the opening so many times. Honestly, I'll just get four of these. After talking to those two, then I can head back. Wait, uh, I should talk to Kato and then see if I can... No, okay, I yeah, I did miss a lottery. Uh, so, once again, not gonna get access to that final lottery at the end of the game. my train of thought immediately. <laughs> you know, never mind, I don't know. I should use these on Yuri. Once again, I know that I should use them in battle for like peak effectiveness, but I can't be asked to try to get those good. The amount of time I'd be spending on that. Okay, so Western Belt for everybody. Also, I'm a pocket watch. And yeah, Leonardo's bear for everybody. Not for right now, but 
Well, yeah, I do have Zhu Zhen in the later fight, don't I? Because it's Alice who's gone. So this time, no exploring this place to try and find everything. Well, I say that, but <laughs> I intentionally didn't pick up a Leonardo's bear. Well, didn't buy a third just because. Whatever, I'll get another opportunity to buy one if I don't find one. Guess I could use skills right now, but... <laughs> Just thinking, because I can still use skills. There's a part of me that doesn't want to, just because, like, well, I should probably get used to the next... Well, like, used to it for the next two, but then again... If I want to go faster... I might as well buy another Leonardo's bear while I'm here. Just trying to actually risk this for once. Woohoo! Almost missed it. And actually uh, would have gotten a penalty point for the first time. No. Okay. Expecting that immediately see like a treasure chest that it contains it. So I kind of want to get into a bunch of fights just to gain some experience and not speed through things too fast, leaving myself at too low of a level. The other big thing is the reason why I want to get into more fights is because I do want uh, Zhu Zhen to get his uh, healing skill. Let's go for it. I probably should have saved. But I'm confident. If I remember this thing uh, was water? 
Just because it resisting fire would be especially mean when, you know, your main magic attacker would be Hu Zhen. I'll just keep doing fireball. It's pretty high damage. Damn it. If it hits. If I if I don't screw it up, it's pretty high damage. I did realize just now that because of no items, I actually have no form of healing for this fight. I guess, well, no, it takes 16 SP to transform, so I literally do not have a form of healing right now, huh? I really do just have to swing in and swing for the fences, hope I win. Both Yuri and Andrew Jen are almost dead. I'm about to turn on Turbo and <laughs> speed my way back here. Oh, I might actually be able to pull this off. It's low on health. On. Can only kill one of us. Killing the lower damage one. This might be it. Yep. Okay, good. I don't have to reload. Sujan, though, did not level, so... That's, I'm still in a bad spot with regards to that, but at the very least, it's not like for the next stretch where I have to use him, I can even use any magic, so. It doesn't really matter that he doesn't know how to heal. Yeah, no skills, so just punching. At the very least, I have access to my items, so I can still heal. My animation tripped the an uh, uh, stepped on the save circle for a moment, but then when my return to my idle animation, it stopped. <laughs> I was technically off of it. Always fun to be in that point of an RPG where you're like, I probably should be getting into more fights. I probably should be getting into encounters just to make sure I have experience. And that question of like, should I stick around to get into more encounters? Do I intentionally take longer?
Right, I should actually put Alice in the front row for this. And I should definitely focus down the puppet guard there. So I definitely do want to be getting to a lot more encounters. I know this thing's almost dead, so... Might as well just remove an action from the field. Puppet guard here might be almost dead too. Oh, with that much damage though, no. finish it off. There we go. Hollis still gets SP. Well, it still gets experience. I might as well check their, their equipment. Raise their physical attack a little at least. Take that one. Well, I could have. <laughs> it just wouldn't have moved me far. It would have disoriented me. At least three perfects from Marguerite currently can take down one of these. So Marguerite and Alice together can at least do solid damage. You can take out one of these a turn. Like, for every... Two, for every... Okay. Think about the way I say this. Every time Alice and Marguerite attack together on a single target, they can take out one of these. The crits help, definitely. Of 
whatever. That should hopefully be enough to let Marguerite kill. Yeah, I'll buy. Did I buy a third Leonardo's uh, bear? Yes, I did. Okay, now I can actually upgrade characters' equipment. get a chance to upgrade their equipment uh, for the next uh, part of this dungeon. Upgrade the guy's equipment, I mean. So this should be a pretty big upgrade for my damage output now. Alice is still not going to kill these things in a single turn. Oh, maybe actually. Uh, Marguerite definitely is, though. Yeah, she's not even going to need a full uh, three hits. So these things that you have somewhere around 40 HP. 40 to 45. So, yeah, Alice, if I get all three hits, actually could one turn these things now. Strike Marguerite can also take down the uh, puppets, uh, puppet guards in one turn. I think with all three uh, perfects, she might be able to one turn those as well. I think now the goal should be finding the red one, a uh, red teleporter. Definitely not the purple one. Yeah, there we go. So Alice can one-turn them, even with slightly uh, not the greatest rolls on damage. Oh, don't even need a strike. Or, like, any perfects or whatnot. Just need three hits for Marguerite to one-shot the one-turn those guys. Not exactly one-shotting. <laughs> when you take multiple attacks, and when you do multiple attacks in a single turn.
So another reason why I want to do a lot of fights right now is because I also do want to get a decent num uh, decent amount of money for the sake of upgrading the boys' equipment. The boys, I say about uh, Yuri and an old man. I think I actually want to head north. But I think it's actually like north and to the right. Yeah. Okay, so this is where I started. My, me taking my time to figure this out is fine. These fights go by fast enough and give solid experience, so... Not in really any danger. Just stand to benefit from taking my time. Oh, dang. Okay, so Alice with bad rolls actually can, like, actually won't want her them. So her damage is basically just teetering on the edge of being able to one turn them. So that was about 42 that that did. So these things are probably like 40 to 42 in terms of health. Probably 40. Still kind of thinking, by the way, about how Shadow Hearts Covenant finally got the uh, fix that it needed. Because it's been so long that it's like it's a it's been a known problem, uh, pretty much for all of PS2 emulation that that has stuck around, and the fact that it. Finally, just today, that fix is really nice. I mean, it is still just on the unstable, like, nightly builds, but... They are only unstable because it's nightly builds. Okay, they have about 39 HP. About like 38 to 39 then, I'm guessing. Because 37 wasn't enough. But that was 39 just there, so.
area. Let's risk it. Let's risk it even more. Well, there are penalty point. I was I was able to afford one. Shushan doesn't even have a leather vest, dog. I should equip the thing that I just got first for. Increases you get for selling are like barely anything. Because it's just, it's a lower number in the first place, so. Uh, I didn't even ever use this when I played through the game. But, like, it's a lower number in the first place that things sell for in comparison to how much you buy them for. And then, alongside that, it's only a 5% for every uh, card that you have compared to the 10%. Okay. Let's also sell the Voodoo Doll. I mean, Auto Res is nice, but... I didn't use it last. I didn't use it when I played through last. Now I have a good chunk of money, so let's actually get, like, get the guys their equipment. Because they're extremely going to need it for their section. Shouldn't be too hard. We still have access to healing, so we can go a while. We do have upgraded equipment, and we do have uh better. Well, that's really it. We just we can keep swinging in. And we can maintain that. Damage output definitely a lot lower than what Yuri's team had, though, because of the lack of access to specials for one, and because we don't have Yuri for two. Yeah. 
yeah, I'll, I'm willing to use this. That double's still worth not having that third hit. The only thing I have left are for the user. Whatever, that one turn where we got like about 70 damage in was worth it. Well, I, speaking of 70 damage, also its health is low now. I don't even know if it's worth <laughs> removing paralysis on Alice at this point. She's not really even doing damage, she's just using items, and that's it. Uh, Alice might be dead. Okay. There we go. So really, the big thing at this rate is just going to be that uh, Zhu Zhen is underleveled. Notably so compared to everybody else, actually. <laughs> Two instances of PCSX2 open. Wait, what? I don't want to close either because I. Oh. <laughs> yeah, now everything's restricted, so. At the very least, we're no longer expected to have in battle healing. going into the front. Yeah, I have to intentionally try and get into some fights here, I guess. Yuri's fine. Yuri's fine in terms of level. But the issue is just Zhuzhen is so much lower level. Level 11 compared to level 15. A 
Okay, good. Yuri can handle these things physically. That's good. Absolutely cannot. <laughs> Yuri presumably can one turn everything. There we go. And he just learned a uh, healing potion, so... Well, that would have been helpful a fight ago. Yuri, at the very least, currently is pretty notably fast, too. So fights generally shouldn't be too long, especially if they're just one enemy. So I can basically start every fight by taking out at least one target. Where did this put me? I think it's like on the other end of things, like the western end now I'm on. Hey, a soul benediction. barely didn't one turn it. So I'm gonna wanna kill uh let's get rid of the succubus queen and then revive if we can. Oh right, I can't. <laughs> And just refuses to level. <laughs> he refuses to gain experience at this point. Right, that's back to the purple. doing <laughs> this small dungeon and figuring out where to go. Might as well talk about some other stuff like potential future uh, RPGs that I want to try on stream. That I want to play on stream. Uh, I've been thinking about Digimon World 2 lately. Like, it's a shorter one. Uh, I've had Digimon on the mind because of... Well, Digimon Survive did finally come out this year, and, well, when, really, Digimon's on the mind most times of the year, to be honest. 
just in general. And I'm building that uh, Duke Mon kit, or Gallant Mon kit. It's Duke Mon slash Gallant Mon on the box itself. It keeps both names there. But yeah, I'm building that kit right now, so Digimon is on my mind especially. So, uh, I've just been reminiscing about, like, one of my favorite childhood PS1 RPGs, which was Digimon World 2. I was bad at the dungeon stuff. Which, on a similar note, I've also been thinking of Chocobo's Dungeon 2, the PS1, and playing through all of that. On stream. So yeah, Digimon World 2 is definitely something that I kind of want to stream. Just because that game's actually pretty good. It's probably going to be really easy now that I'm an adult and know how to do this stuff. But, still. Right, it's go to the north and then go all the way to the east from the northern path. If I remember correctly. For this one. Oh, hey, there's the free Leonardo's bear. It's right at the end. You're guaranteed to get one. And right, now I have to find the red portal. So the game does guarantee you one Leonardo's bear. You know, maybe one of these days, I'll play games other than RPGs and first-person shooters. I say as, like, I'm about to start a Halo Wars sometime soon. Like, I'm about to start... Like, I'm gonna beat Fear's second expansion po uh, pack next week. And then... And then I'm gonna start Halo Wars after that. I think next week I'm only going to do one session of Shadow Hearts New Game Plus. Because admittedly at the rate that I'm going through it, I might just beat Shadow Hearts next week on New Game Plus. Well, Yuri's confused for the rest of the fight. Go get him! Hell yeah! Good job, Yuri! You can handle it yourself! Haha, you unconfused him by trying to confuse him. That was a very successful fight. The AI just had to take over for me for a turn. It wanted a feeling of the action. Okay, at least Yuzhen's gained two levels since we've been in this. I don't think I'm going to get him up to 15 before the boss fight, but at least gaining two levels is fine. But yeah, at the rate that I'm clearing through uh, New Game Plus so far, I can see myself being done with Shadow Hearts 1 next week as well. But I think next week's schedule... Which, by the way, yeah, I, I do realize I didn't make a schedule post this week. I didn't make... I didn't tweet that out. I mean, Twitter's dying anyways, and my schedule this week is the exact same as it was last week, but... But yeah, next week, though, I'm thinking my schedule is probably going to be like Fear, uh, fear uh, uh, Perseus Mandate, the final uh, final session for that. Then it's going to be uh, Halo Wars, probably going to start Halo Wars on the Tuesday. Then on the Thursday, finish up Shadow Hearts New Game Plus.
and then on uh yeah friday and saturday are still gonna be more pso three well pso episode three god it's gonna be so confusing when they actually release P uh, fantasy star online three when that finally comes to pass it's like gonna be so confusing wait fantasy star three episode three oh, or oh right i need that wood token as well to finish this Gotta hope that Zhuzhen does not get hit. <laughs> I should probably heal as soon as this fight is over. Okay, with a strike, Zhuzhen can one turn them. Before the screen has even drawn, I've already opened up the menu. Well, it's probably drawn, it just needs to have the fate in effect happen. Three studded cap. Yeah. That's really the thing, though, by the way, with, like, streaming RPGs is I'm such a huge fan of RPGs, and I have so many that I want to play on stream. So many that I've put off on playing for so long, and that now streaming is, for me, this opportunity to finally, like, focus and playing through them. Having an excuse to. Rather than just waiting for, like, well, if they ever remaster this, I guess I could play it through it for the Platinum on, like, PlayStation. Like I'm going to be doing with Suica Den 1 and 2. Uh... Yeah, with... But, like, with streaming, you know... I probably should update, like, my uh, Twitch profile stuff soon to include upcoming games that I'm going to be doing. Like, that I've settled on doing. Like, like I said, the Digital Devil Saga duology. Uh, I, I mentioned that last time I streamed. I'm going to be working through all of Trails in the Sky next. Probably gonna return straight to Shadow Hearts though after Trails in the Sky. I might start juggling th uh, three multi game series. <laughs> like. There we go. Uh, like doing Shadow Hearts, uh, like doing uh, Trails in the Sky uh, first, next, and then Shadow Hearts cover, and then. Uh, like. Trails in the Sky first, then uh, Digital Devil Saga 1, then Shadow Hearts Covenant, then Trails in the Sky 2, then Digital Devil Saga Episode 2, then Trails in the Sky 3rd. <laughs> Make all three series take as long as possible to reach their conclusion. Oh, and then Shadow Hearts from the New World, probably, as well in there. Uh, shouldn't need to buy anything new. Yeah, I'm fine. Or, I can't use SP for I can't use MP for the next fight anyway, so it doesn't matter if uh, it not full on anyone. The whole wood token thing just there is extremely survival horror. Just once again, just a slight reminder that this is technically a sequel to a survival horror game. And that that's where the roots of this series are. I kind of wish this game had more, like, survival horror kind of design in it. Or, like, puzzles and whatnot. I do always feel like a lot of JRPGs could use more, like, involved dungeon stuff. Ooh. Right, I can't even use items here. I, w I was thinking I was going to use one of the items to decrease Yuri's hit area so I could get more damage. Yeah. 
Yeah, I generally think a lot of RPGs could use more involved dungeon stuff. Uh, just because a lot of them aren't in the style of, like, a dungeon crawler. Uh, well, generally very involved dungeon design is kind of my jam, and I really like that sort of stuff. But not every RPG is going for that, where you have this single dungeon that you're expected to take multiple trips in, and you're, the whole idea is that you just keep making progress as you go rather than you do it all in one go and you're expected to. You're, uh, like, the whole, you're expected to make multiple trips thing. That the Etrian Odyssey games really hammered down well. Where doing all of a stratum in an Etrian Odyssey game in one run is, like, explicitly, like, that is... That is a sign you did something really well about your setup, and you were, like, you're, that's your reward. But yeah. Yeah, like, I feel like a lot of JRPGs usually could use more involved mechanics for their, for their dungeons in some way or another. Like, part of what I like about Wild Arms is the fact that it has that, like, slight Zelda-style... Uh, puzzle stuff to it. I do get why you can't go too involved with RPG uh, dungeon stuff, though. Because it's that whole thing of, like, well, then random encounters start, well, like, not even just random encounters, but encounters in general start to drag more, because now you have two distinct things that are fighting for time with each other. And yeah, there's there's a whole lot in the whole design of how JRPGs would work and what makes them work. Oh hey, and you get a guaranteed Leonardo's Bear from that fight as well. So you're guaranteed to have two. Well, you're guaranteed to have one, but you should have two as long as you were opening chests. But yeah, uh, like I was saying, I feel like Survival horror structure, having JRPG fights in it is already kind of a risky thing to do because, once again, it's that whole aspect of, well, with how survival horror works, it's about the resource drain, but so are, you know, JRPGs, but they're kind of about resource drain in different ways. Might as well. Like, survival horror is more about resource drain in the sense of you don't have guaranteed ways to refill your resources. You're not spending all your resources and then retreating. You are avoiding spending your resources. And in JRPGs, you want to spend your resources because doing so makes you stronger. And it's just more so a question of how far you can stretch your resources. So that's kind of like, I get like why the two genres are kind of hard to blend in that sense. But I do feel like survival horror puzzle stuff can work in a JRPG sense, just because, you know, overworld puzzles can work in a JRPG sense. Having more involved overworld stuff I do think is interesting. But like I said, it's that whole push and, uh, uh, that whole give and take aspect of, well, JRPG design, uh, if you're focusing on the combat of the game, you don't want overworld stuff to be too involved and start to get in the way of getting into combat. And you don't want combat to start feeling like it's interrupting you doing something on the overworld. That's a real big problem, is as soon as combat starts feeling like it's an interruption to what you're trying to do to progress. Obviously, you know, you can... And it, this is, by the way, this is like... Obviously you can make, like, you just don't design for random encounters. That's the obvious answer for that. But even then, that still gives trouble with that. That still means that players are actively avoiding encounters because it's getting in the way of the game. 
and you don't want that to feel like it's the case you want it to feel like the encounters uh like the rpg mechanics the battle system is the game you're playing which is what dungeon crawlers are, are all about is that whole aspect of like you know you're playing this game like the whole the whole point of the dungeon is that you are just navigating and getting into encounters and that you're like in the case of Etrian Odyssey you're doing puzzles that are largely movement based now Etrian Odyssey also makes a lot of other smart decisions with having like the more puzzle uh, puzzly style areas you know in those you have a lower encounter rate. Etrian Odyssey knows how to make random encounters work, and it is one of my biggest inspirations for, like, all of my game design thoughts, genuinely. Like, how to try and blend that with a more traditionally narrative structure-based game, and how to make the whole, like, uh, the whole like aspect of pushing through a dungeon matter while still having a more narrative structure based game where you want to have dungeons that you progress through and that at the like at the start middle and end have like narrative points ones where it doesn't feel bad to retreat out of being the big thing but then like also the fact that you would have to have dungeons that are like this is a shorter affair this is just for pro this is mainly for story progression and for like environmental design like a lot of modern RPGs have. And that's kind of an unavoidable thing because that allows you to have story progression happen at a fairly regular uh, pace. So yeah. Like, it, basically, if I were to make a JRPG, like, I'd... I'd probably want to go more towards, like, the Wild Arms style of having more like Zelda style puzzles but having them be generally more simple having them generally be more simple but with all, still having a lot of options to interact with like a lot of different Zelda tools basically right everybody's full health everybody's going to need a Leonardo's bear for this upcoming fight Uh, I do want more money, so. I don't think I'm going to be getting hit with paralysis. But yeah, I'd probably go for, like, a more Zelda-style design, just so that way, uh, even for the, like, more strict, like, story progression dungeon stuff, you at least have something going on. It would still have to be lighter in puzzle design than a Zelda game, because Zelda games, what they're benefited by is the fact that combat generally is very fast in them. So enemies popping up can give a nice flow to the dungeon where you're doing combat and jug where you're able to do combat and juggle uh, a puzzle solving with that combat at the same time. And that, you know, dungeons still have their own resource drain, but it's still pretty quickly paced, and it's still... Oh, right, he absorbs everything. So I shouldn't actually be in Heaven's Fiend if the only purpose is just for... Uh, if... The only good thing Heaven's Fiend does is magic, so I shouldn't even be in it. But yeah. But yeah, with uh, having a more JRPG-style dungeon design and whatnot, a key thing with that would be that... Like, with having more Zelda-style dungeon design in JRPG, basically, a key thing with that would be having to make sure that the puzzles aren't as involved as in Zelda and are generally faster and lighter, because encounters uh, with enemies would have to take longer in the first place, even if, even if it's a fast JRPG in terms of encounter pacing, uh, it would still be a more involved process because you are entering into an encounter.
doesn't matter if it takes about 10 seconds to do an encounter, like to enter and leave the encounter, versus like, oh, this Zelda enemy, this single enemy takes like 30 seconds to beat. It still feels longer because you are exiting uh, the normal flow of the game. <laughs> You are exiting the normal flow of the dungeon. That's what this, by the way, this stream is largely going to be my musings on JRPG design at this point, because once again, new game plus. But yeah. So like I said, uh, because of that, you would generally have to, like, if you keep up the pacing, like, if you keep uh, Zelda-style pacing, but it's JRPG turn-based encounters, you like the dungeon. If the dungeon is still as involved, it would feel a lot worse just because of how much the flow would shift from one to the other. So the puzzle-solving element would definitely have to be a lot lighter. But I think a way of getting away with that and still making it feel very good to the player would probably be giving them a lot of different puzzle interacting options. Even if the puzzles themselves are generally pretty simple, having a lot of different ways, having a lot of different options for interacting with things in a Zelda-like fashion would end up making up for that. It would still make things more involved and require, like, make even the slighter puzzles still take longer because you're now like having to think more about what you're using but yeah yeah like i said at the very least a key thing would be just making making dungeons a, the slightest bit more involved in terms of having puzzles going on even if they're very simple even if they're very easy to do Having something there makes dungeons more interesting. Rather than just something you just walk straight through and get to encounter through. Kind of, like I said, once again, it's what I love about Ephraim and Odyssey is the fact that they are so well-tuned around the resource uh, management aspect of JRPGs of dungeon crawlers, especially. And their dungeon design is generally really good at having simple puzzles for you to figure out, entirely just based around movement. Based around movement and maybe between floor stuff. But just very much using the basics, and stretching those basics out in incredibly interesting ways. I don't know why I risked it like that when it's like, if I don't get this Yuri, I probably should heal Yuri instead. Instead of constantly pushing for more damage here. There we go. I will say, open world, by the way, as a structure thing for JRPGs is actually really interesting conceptually to me. Like, for turn-based games especially. Because it actually can play really well into that resource drain aspect of things. It essentially turns the whole world into a dungeon to explore. And it kind of captures an aspect of JRPG overworlds, but in a greater scale. And yeah, like I said, because of the, the fact that it kind of, in a way, can turn the whole world into a more exploration-focused thing, which I really like it when... I really like exploration-focused games in general. But having that really adds to the whole resource drain nature of things. Where, like, you're, like, you're exploring, but you're constantly waiting, like, well, I have... I have this much health and this much uh, healing and whatnot. Yeah, it's it's a really interesting thing. 
It's why, like, I think it's really interesting what Pokemon and SMT have been doing with it. SMT definitely on the lower scale of things, but... And, uh, it's why Xenoblade is so much fun, because... Even if it doesn't have that whole dungeon crawling aspect, it, like, on the whole resource aspect of things, due to your resources being just cooldowns and, uh, health that refills at the end of every fight, even then, it still adds an exploration side of things and still makes just traversal more interesting. Which, like, due to the way Xenoblade is structured and works, it can't really have that resource drain. Meanwhile, like stuff like if it was turn-based and whatnot, then it, it it could afford to have resource drain, basically. The Xenoblade, Xenoblade would require a lot of very core changes to its combat to allow for resources that you can spend. Basically. Yeah, I would actually like to see like I'm thinking about Pokemon, obviously, because, you know, Sword and Shield was leaning towards that whole open world idea. Uh, Legends Arceus, well, Legends Arceus, 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 Arceus. It's either the C-E-U-S, uh, it's either a hard C, so Arceus or Arceus. And the E-U-S is either like Zeus or like Deus. I think it might be like Deus. But yeah, uh, Legends are, uh, are, let's go with, let's look up the Japanese pronunciation. I have just gotten completely distracted by Pokemon, haven't I? Okay. It. Okay. Just need to open up a katakana guide. <laughs> I'm completely distracted from Xenoblade now thinking about the pronunciation of a Pokemon. Okay, so... Or the... Ah, the... Ah, the... Is that she or key? That's the real big question here. I should probably like internalize this and actually study it for once. It's not she, so... I think that... If it's what I'm thinking it is...
Okay, it's Arceus. There we go. Arceus. So it is pronounced like Deus. And it's a it's a soft uh, C. Okay, I don't really need Anna's cross. Now having to think about Oh right, uh I go to the boat. If I remember correctly, I'll probably remember when I see the answers, but I'm trying to because I do want to still go to Kowloon. I took a big aside there just to be like, wait, how's this pro Pokemon pronounced? <laughs> Let me cite Japanese. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, to, to finish my thought that I was distracted from, uh, Legend Ar Legends Arceus and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet going for the more open world stuff. Oh wait, was I supposed to go back? I'm just trying to recall the order of events here. Do I go to the, I think I go to the bar. Yeah, I go to the bar, and then the cutscenes happen, and then upon leaving the bar, I'm given the key. And then I take the boat. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, I do like the whole open world stuff that Pokemon's been going for. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei 5 definitely goes for a more open world thing, and I haven't actually progressed too far into that, but I really like what I've seen. Uh, it's just one of those things of like, I get why people would be negative on it, because uh, it can result in a bit less of the more wild dungeon design, like in terms of visual design, that a lot of JRPGs are good at. Because you can have, you know, self-contained areas that just do whatever they want visually. They don't have to blend in with the rest of the world. But I do think that, <laughs> admittedly... Uh, that is something that can fit in perfectly with open world design if what you're searching on the open world for are those self-contained dungeons. It is the biggest strength of Breath of the Wild, for example, is the fact that you are going around searching for trials and shrines. The dungeon design is the weakest thing in that game, but that game very easily could have, like, the whole traditional eight dungeon structure fit into it. But yeah. Yeah, like I said, I want to see more like traditional turn based JRPGs do that whole open world structure thing and then also have dungeon design in it. Which, once again, that actually still kind of goes into. Hey, what if Zelda was a turn-based RPG to some extent, thinking about it? Alright, put I should put Zhuzhen in the background now. Now that he has access to his magic again. For the Wugui fight uh, that I did against the Yamaraja version of him, uh, it was pretty useless to try and shift him into the back row. Well, it was useful just because you could still at least use items from there, but it was pretty bad just in the sense of, like, well, he still can't use his skills, so he might as well just be swinging in. God, Kato... Kato goes through some goddamn hard times in this game. He keeps say, is seeing his superiors get betrayed by their own country. Yeah, I'm definitely going to finish Act 1 tonight. I'm probably not going to make any progress into Act 2, looking at things. Because it's about half an hour before <laughs> I have to, before I'm heading out to go get uh, Pokemon Scarlet. Oh, 
don't mind me. Just stepping onto my boat. Don't mind our loud conversation as we talk about our plans. So yeah, I do want to go to Kowloon entirely just to get the hand needle for you. I'm not going to be doing anything else there other than that. It is kind of funny that for as much as, like, open world is a pretty shitty trend, there is that level. All right, I'm supposed to then now go back out on the world map and then walk to uh, the tower, I think. Or am I supposed to take the boat? We'll find out. But yeah, but th at the same time, open world for as much as it's like kind of become a, a bit of an obnoxious trend to see it, like pop up in everything. It is, it did still start as an RPG thing and it's, it still makes the most sense as an RPG thing. Hey, thanks for putting me in the back row. Because as mentioned, it, it mainly turns the overworld itself into, like, it adds an exploration element, which RPGs are good with, and it extends the whole resource management side of an RPG towards more of the game. And even if you don't have resource management, it... I do have to use the boat. Yeah, even if you don't have that resource management side, it still does add an exploration element to the uh, to the world design and whatnot. Meaning that, at the very least, even if without the resource management, there's still something there to the overworld, to uh, wanting to wander around and explore things. Meanwhile, in other JRPG things, just recently been thinking about how, like... Am I supposed to? Uh... Another thing that's recently popped up for me is... Uh, hey, uh, Soul Hackers 2 finally got that update. I finally no longer feel like I should delay until... <laughs> delay beating the game until the update that adds four more demons hits. Just like how with Xenoblade 3, I'm putting off on playing through all of it until they release all the DLC. Because, oh man, but I want to play through the whole game with all of that stuff. Now that I have the key... What do I do? was I supposed to do? Do I head back to the bar? I think I head back to the bar. I think I head back to entertainment show. Yeah. 
<laughs> Whatever, this is good experience anyways. It's good and easy. This should cover me to the end of Act 1. Oh. Well, I'm going to have to use a save point soon to go to the graveyard and clear that. Am I supposed to go to the... I'm supposed to go to Kawashima, I think. I don't even have a pedometer equipped. Yeah, the music changed. I'm going to Kawashima. And then, so I can save her from this. From Kutsugi. That knockback shouldn't really matter much, because they're both going to be pretty low on health. I think I might be able to shift Yuri to uh, a second level fusion now. I might as well use a grenade instead of just trying to physical this down. Well. These are technically upgraded enemies compared to the ones I've been fighting in the streets. By the way, the whole open world structure stuff that I've been talking about, working well for JRPGs, is kind of what makes Octopath like, the good... It's a really good part of Octopath is the fact that, like, the dungeon design may be incredibly basic and not good. But that game has so much of an emphasis on exploring outside of the dungeons and just letting you just wander around that it makes up for it for me. Which is why I'm really excited for Octopath 2. See what lessons they learned from the first game. It's why I'm more okay with Octopath having bad dungeons compared to Bravely, uh, Bravely Default having bad dungeons. Because there's more of an emphasis on just exploring and finding things in Octopath. Okay, so let's just see which answers I should give. I'm not going to look it up just yet. I'm going to see what the answers are and then see if I remember clearly. Uh, I think it was all it was all number three or all number one. So let's just quickly look up Kowloon. The, all the first comments.
So yeah, you distract him by being notably stubborn. Being stubborn and outspoken throws him off. And then the third time you ignore him, and that's basically just him like going like, wait, where are you? You were just shouting at me and now you, now you're just going to ignore me? What the hell? And he just doesn't know how to handle it. And it just completely throws him off. Yeah, that third key is going to be good for a boss fight. Uh, yeah, I was kind of thinking I was going to need to heal. Uh, I'm going to speed through this fight here. I'm going to use the third key to speed through this first fight. Against uh, Yamaraja War, I think it was. So I'll go into Inferno, buff myself, and then just swing away. Also, yeah, like I... I had the thought that, yeah, I probably should switch to the higher tier of... Uh, fusions now. Is there like... Like 26, I think? Something like that? Yeah, fighting Spirit. Fighting Spirit, well, the 30% buff would be absolutely massive at this point in the game. Well, resistance, that'd be magic resist? Yeah. And it's weak to water. I don't want to do anything that'll make Yuri have a harder time hitting, though. Hmm. If I'm going to use the third key, that is. Yeah, I don't have any other spells for Jujan to use. Could hopefully get Life Sucker at the end of this fight. Okay, so I could use, yeah, rotate twice as fast, but... I'll just use the third key by itself. Because, yeah, I was already having enough trouble. Yeah, three hits of attacks. And those are pretty beefy attacks, too. I'm gonna have... I'm gonna use Scout now. I actually wonder how much damage that was, and if that, if this thing's uh, health is going to be visible. Yeah, I could use some help here. Let's see. Oh, it's Yamaraja Stone. I mean, it's Fire Element, anyways, but so if Yuzhen not having Life Sucker is a downside right now, but damn it. Whatever. Opening up with that third key is still pretty big. Apply Aqua Edge to Marguerite. Give her a damage buff as well. Yeah, I can use some help here. Jujen, right now, I think he's just going to be a dedicated healer for this fight.
Yeah, Yamanaja War is low on health now. Okay, good. Like I said, this would have gone smoother if I uh, remember to change out Yuri's fusions, but... Does that 30% buff? Yeah, like I said, it's pretty big. Especially for this point in the game. Forget when I can get a Mind's Eye, now that I think about it. That's gonna also be huge. But I don't think the Ogre, uh, I don't think the Yamaraja is low on health yet. I don't know if it is, I don't know if it is or not. I wasn't paying too much attention to its normal animation. It seems like it might be breathing more heavily. I'll just keep swinging in. Yeah, like I said, uh, yeah, it's okay. It's definitely now low on health. But yeah, that fifty per that uh, like that boost from Fighting Spirit is about as much as hitting uh, three nices. So. Let's just open up the wiki page for the lottery. Okay, yeah, the mind's eye I get from uh, Kowloon. Okay. So I definitely want to grab that as well while I'm there. taking up longer <laughs> to do the stream because so the EB games opens at 10 so it opens in a couple minutes there we go somebody didn't get experience just now I think Jujan did <laughs> or poor Jujan <laughs> yeah. but yeah the EB games opens at 10 so like five minutes now I don't have to be there when they open and because they're open till midnight for this. That's why they're calling it a midnight release. Because they're open till midnight. But I think I'll give like... I probably should be able to clear out this dungeon in like half an hour and get to... I haven't cleared out my malice yet. Good thing that's not popped up yet. Fortress, and I'll just use the first save spot here to, uh, well, to save so I can make sure I can get the mind's eye. Oh, right, it doesn't have a save point in here, does it? If I leave, I'm going to have to... Oh no, I can just save here and I can use the... And here... Might as well use the Seal of Life on Yuri. Uh, I'll actually use the Graveyard first. Ha! <laughs> 
missing that first hit is such a big blow to my damage. Should, I, I need to equip the new fusions. If I can, I should be able to. I think they are like 20 or 30. In terms of cost. They might be 40. And then it's 60 for the tier 3's now. Okay, it's 32. That's still exceptionally, like, that's still extremely worth it. Because it is full on, like, I legitimately should have no access to these normally. And only have access to them because of New Game Plus. Now it's time to do some lottery. I missed it by a lot. Get what the moon swallow is as well. Oh, that forces all crits. Right, right, right. So next week is definitely not going to be me completing the game. That was way too early. Yeah. At the very least, it's a quick reload. Come on. It's too late, barely. I will say, at the very least, I don't need to get tissues for the for any stones. Which one was it? Okay, I got it. So that's gonna double Yuri's damage. And I'm consistent enough with it, uh, whatever. And I'm just here for the hand needle anyways. Yep, and that's going to even further boost Yuri's damage to crazy levels.
But yeah, with the tier 2 fusions on Yuri, those are going to be worth it in the sense of, like, even needing to, like, heal Yuri afterwards. Taking that turn to spend a, a pure item on him to recover, to recover SP is more than worth it still. Yeah, even just fusing and attacking now is huge. Oh, well, let's leave. Got everything I wanted from here. All right, one of these things is physical immune, one of them is magic immune. Or it's that one of them is just immune to one thing, and I forget which one. Oh, well, that solves that. And then I use magic on the other. Yeah, I can use some help. Hopefully, I'll get Zhujan's next spell. Jujen's not doing anything this fight. <laughs> this is also going to be extremely good damage for this point in the game. Oh, there we go. Jujen got a non-fire element damp, a non-fire element spell. I got everything I came for. Uh, you know what? With the point in game that this is, it is actually kind of worth it to get upgrades on the hand needle. Maxing out the hand needle should be fine. Now Yuri's damage is going to be through the roof and is going to carry us through the remaining part of Act 1. Well, let's just finish up Kui High Tower now. Uh, I don't even need to get the erotic magazine, but I might as well because I know it's there. But I would need it for uh, a seraphic... What's it called? Seraphic Radiance. I would need it to get Seraphic Radiance, but I already have Seraphic Radiance, so. Okay, so from what I remember, the order is place the Black Tortoise, then you get something else, and then you just need to do. Yeah, yeah, you. Place the black tortoise, and that gives you access to the second. Which I then can trade off, uh, and whatnot. Hey, that's good. I can wander in these things. With Yuri, specifically. Nobody else can. Okay, Zhu Zhan probably can if he spends MP on them. There we 
go. At this point, I wish I could turn off encounters, honestly. I am more than strong enough to handle the rest of this dungeon. Like, to handle the final boss of Act 1, I'm more than strong enough for that. Why did they make penis demons? Yeah, I could use some help here. Just the thought as I have to return to fighting these things. to go to the side room. Might as once again, might as well. I'm gonna run from this. You know, I don't care anymore. I don't need the experience. Well, Zhujen could use it, actually. There we go. Do the erotic book. I need the red phoenix, so that way I can place... <laughs> forget the stupid hole. Blue. I place the blue dragon. So that way I can go progress the red phoenix path and grab the uh, white tiger. So I can then go back and grab the blue dragon after placing the White Tiger in its proper location. Pretty short place, all things considered, if you know the order to do things. And yeah, I placed the Blue Dragon on my way out, and then yeah, and that's it. Okay. Not like I'm fighting you. Yeah, thinking about how last time, I was like, oh, who knows how far we're gonna get into Act 2. The answer is nowhere. <laughs> we're gonna start Act 2. That's it. And there, puzzle solved. Oh. Just might as well save before getting into any boss fights. As is the smart thing to do. I wonder if I should be swinging with Dragner's uh, water attacks or if I should be swinging with physical attacks. Because, yeah, I'll be swinging with physical, actually, because buffed physical, mind's eye, uh, it's going to be way too much damage for this game to handle at this point. Ifrit. Mission. Next turn, ignition. 
Also gonna want Aqua Edge on him. Everything here is weak to water. Yeah, I can use some help here. I'll have Zhuzhen just uh, heal up Yuri's uh, SP. Well, actually, I don't need to yet, now that I think about it. He's not low enough to warrant that. He might be just done anyways, like, by the time that I, like, would be running low on anything. There we go. Perfect. So it's a 36%. This is about 56 damage total. Well, 55 damage total. Life Sucker was about 90. Let's see how much Yuri does when he gets to his turn. Yeah, like I said, far too much damage for the game to know how to deal with at this point in time because of how uh, defense works. I don't know how defense works, but I know enough about how defense... I know... I can see from the results of the damage buffs that I get that, like, yeah. Just... Whatever way defense works, that 36% buff would be way too much for this game to handle at this point in time. Hey, old man, you're never going to guess what's about to hit your face. <laughs> My fists. defense is against like the damage you do or if defense is against your physical attack before your physical attack is factored into like how much damage you're about to do damn it I mean I'm definitely gonna kill him as soon as I get one swing in but That's gonna suck when I can't have Yuri in my party for the start of Act 2. I'll just focus on healing. Like, I have my singular damage source that is more than good enough. There we go. Yeah, I'm just wondering if uh, defense is a, is against physical attack, and that like it basically calculates okay defense versus physical attack, and then the remaining physical attack is added is factored into the uh, damage you do or something like that, or if defense is just a flat number down versus uh, like. I don't know. There's something wonky in there that makes it so, like, even slight boost to physical... Like, even slight boost to either number can be huge swings. Time to die, old man. Oh, wow, you survived. <laughs> the difference in damage is maybe a little much. 
Maybe a little. What just happened to Fent? <laughs> Goodbye, old man. Oh, once again, I'm surprised by how much health he has. This is definitely it. <laughs> I've got the funny numbers. <laughs> funny as in, they're a little funny how much they are. I'll admit, that mind's eye is pulling a ton of work as well. Just a flat double to your damage. Hey, Kadelka. If I remember correctly, this upcoming fight can inflict stone on us. Uh, so we actually kind of do want Alice in there. But... You wanted to go with a different party this time for beating the game. I don't know how that's going to work out once I get Ark. The big thing is I don't know if we will have Alice after uh, the point at which uh, we're locked into the bad ending, basically. I don't know if we'll have her even past that point. Or if she dies at the end of the game. Because yeah, the key thing is, you know, she dies. Knowing what we had, what we accomplished for getting the good ending, it's not too much of a spoiler to say that the bad ending is probably going to be she dies. And that's what triggers the bad ending. That's what causes things to go bad. Well, time to just quickly top off everybody in terms of resources. I, I'll just use the tent. There's a save point right before the boss, right? And I might as well boost Yuri's luck. Yeah, knowing what the Seraphic Radiance did when Yuri tried to fuse with it, it is explicitly a good thing that we that Yuri was there to at least stop this to some extent, because it went berserk, but in the sense that like it was at least able to be contained even if it did destroy Shanghai. Should have petrify uh, healing. And petrify resist as well. I don't think I have any petrify resist on anybody. 
uh, or I don't think I have the access to Petrify Resist. It's more relevant. There we go, 36% boost. Don't have to wait for another cycle. And also, I don't even need to buff uh, Yuri with Aqua Edge because this thing's non-elemental. So, I guess I'll just swing in with Snipe. Yeah, I could use some help here. I probably should have healed, but... 62 damage. Hooray. <laughs> Compare that to Yuri's. <laughs> well, I should have saved the third key for this fight. Do I have any keys? I don't. Well, let's just, yeah, let's just see what I get. Ugh. Ugh. I'm just gonna load up. Okay, it has 3,000 health. But considering that Yuri's doing like 500 plus a turn, it shouldn't take long. I don't even know if Yuri's gonna run out of sanity. Nobody else is doing damage, period, but Yuri is. And that's what matters. like 500 plus up to 600 like it's 500 to 600 for Yuri's damage right now well might actually uh, be close to running out of SP it'll be around five turns like five to six turns that depends on how much everybody else's damage adds up It inflicts silence. Good for it. Good for you, Dayfly. Now catch these hands. Oh boy. Okay. So yeah, we're definitely going to be able to finish him off before uh, Yuri goes berserk. That strike just ensured it. Oh, definitely gonna need to heal this petrification. There we go. <laughs> I'm gonna need to heal this petrification. Never mind. I win. <laughs> oh, there. That's act one. And hey, you got a fifth key. I do have to keep in mind that for the final boss, I do need to keep, I do need to make sure I get a key to success and a silver hand and a seventh key. I need, that's all I need to make sure I can kill the final boss. Because even just one seventh key does most of the work. I should probably get two though. Keep as many keys as I can for that fight. They'll definitely still be able to have Seraphic Radiance for just pure, like, stat and pure number, and its buff and whatnot to everybody. Hey, Albert.
know, if we did grind enough, we probably could have gotten the SP. It would take a fucking forever to get the SP to go to Seraphic Radiance, but yeah. But anyways, that was Act 1. Asia, Asia section, Asia section end. I wonder who that's supposed to be. I don't think that actually lines up with any character in the game. Thinking about it. Like, that might be Alice? But anyways, I'm going to call it there. So I'm going to go pick up Pokemon Scarlet. But anyways, so... As per usual, tomorrow is going to be... Uh, more Fantasy Star Online Episode 3. And then going to return to this... Uh, possibly next Tuesday, possibly Thursday. I don't know. Depends on if I really do want to start Halo Wars next week or the week after. But anyways, so as per usual, thanks to everybody who joined in and catch all next time.